cells within our bodies communicate with each other just like we do. Sometimes with cells next door and other times at cells at opposing ends of the body. We've known for quite a while that cells use neurons and hormones to communicate. And most of us can relate to adrenaline, the hormone that is released in our bloodstream under stressful situations like giving TED Talk. <laughs> Turns out that our body is in fact a giant factory of these teeny tiny nanoparticles called the exosomes, and that provides the, our body with another mechanism for cell communication. Almost all cells in our body are continuously manufacturing these nanoparticles and secreting them into our body fluids, into the extracellular environment, which is our blood, our brain, our saliva, and our urine. Once into the body fluid, these teeny tiny exosomes float to distant parts of the body. And when they do, they're carrying these very specific signals and very specific cargoes for the recipient cells, mostly with good consequences, but sometimes with bad ones too. And what they're doing is they're taking these specific signatures, specific signals from the cell, and talking to very distant cells in our bodies. Now, to give you a size perspective of how small these particles are, a single exosome is about a thousand times smaller than a typical cell secreting it. Or, to put it another way, about a million exosomes would fit on the tip of a very, very sharp pencil. So how come did we miss this 24-7 nanofactory? Although they were discovered in the 1980s, scientists initially thought these exosomes were cellular garbage bags throwing out unwanted proteins. In 2007, the discovery that exosomes were actually also transferring genetic material between cells suggested that there was a larger role of these particles in cellular communication. However, their small size was still a challenge. For us scientists, seeing is believing and the first step to understanding. Too small to be seen under a regular microscope, the only way to actually look at these particles was through electron microscopy, a method that involved bombarding these fragile particles with electrons under harsh environmental conditions, high vacuum. Unfortunately, the process was too harsh and did provide little information, if any. One random day in 2010, while talking to my biologist friends at UCLA, I understood how frustrated they were by not being able to see these single exosomes at the individual particle level preventing them from studying them more effectively. And a thought came to my mind. Robert Hooke, a famous 17th century scientist, had once stated, with the help of microscopes, there is nothing so small as to escape our inquiry. Embracing his idea, and as a nanotechnologist, and also to satisfy my own growing curiosity, I decided to examine these particles using the atomic force microscope. An AFM actually feels and touches the surface of the particle using a very, very fine mechanical probe without damaging the particles, the fragile particles under observation. And that was my first meeting with the exosome. Our group at UCLA was the first one to use the atomic force microscope to image exosomes. What you see on the screen and appears as a galaxy of stars are, in fact, exosomes floating in our blood. A picture that I took using our nanoscale microscopy. Now, with the use of the atomic force microscope, we could do much more than just observe exosomes. We could look at their shape, their size, and their structure in greater detail. So here is a zoom in of one of such particle, an exosome, and you can see the particle exhibiting a vesicular shape, something that was undetectable previously using the electron microscopy. So because we were just not observing, but also touching and feeling, we could do a lot more. 
We could count the number of particles that floated in our blood at a time. We could visualize their shape at the nanoscale. We could measure the size of these particles. And also, we could measure the stickiness of these particles, a characteristic that helps them stick to other cells. And we could measure how these particles deformed under force when they go through the harsh biofluid environments, still preserving their precious cargo. These new approaches are enabling us to answer more com complex questions, such as, what exactly is the exosome signaling? Why and how is the cell accepting a package through the exosomes coming from a distant cell? And more importantly, what can we do to exploit this exchange of signals and cargo between distant cells through the exosomes to our advantage? Research has shown that exosomes typically help in neural communication and boost our immune system. They also stimulate tissue regeneration, wound healing, and prevent infections. But that's not always true. Sometimes the exosomes can malfunction, as in the case of cancer. Our group has identified cancer exosomes in body fluids of patients with cancer, and this includes in saliva, in blood, in urine. When these cancer exosomes float within the body fluids, they have one specific mission, cancer carrying signals to other non-cancerous cells. What you see here on the screen is a cancer cell that I caught in the act. You can see the, this burst of exosomes coming out of the, of the membrane surface. These are the exosomes that are carrying the cancer signals, signals that we now know go far and wide. Here is another example of exosomes from a highly aggressive brain cancer. These tentacles that you see, these are very fine nanostructures about width 2,000 times smaller than of a human hair. And these seem like perfect hooks for these exosomes to latch on, to adhere to other non-cancer cells, and thereby transfer their cancer-carrying signals to other non-cancerous cells, and thereby spread disease. What ignites scientists like me to study individual exosomes is the hope that they bring to the biomedical field. First, being able to successfully identify healthy from diseased exosomes gives us a powerful tool to actually very early on detect diseases such as Alzheimer's and cancer just by using a single drop of blood or even saliva. Also, what we can do is we can use their natural abilities to pass through the blood-brain barrier and use them as novel drug delivery agents. Using them as novel drug delivery agents, we can target them to neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, and different cancers, especially the deadly brain cancers that are very difficult to tackle otherwise. It is through nanotechnology that we are deciphering how exosomes communicate. We're trying to understand this complex process of the exosomes carrying good signals, but when they malfunction, they carry the bad signals, and what they do is then spread the disease. So what could be a good communication can, can easily be turned into a bad communication. So I'm, always, I'm often asked, what do I care so much about exosomes and nanotechnology? My father is a doctor and undoubtedly hoped that I would follow his career path. But I always wanted to use innovative ways to break those codes, the signals that cells communicate with each other, how human disease is spread, what can we do through nanotechnology and other innovative ways to actually prevent that spread and also use the healing powers of the good exosomes to actually prevent diseases that are difficult to manage through just the proteomic or the genomic methods and find novel ways. And that's what inspires me about nanotechnology and the exosomes. It is this, this hope to be able to use nanotechnology to look at these small particles, understand them at a very precise level, and then being able to manipulate them to actually 
help the body do more good than the bad. And I'm hopeful that with the work that we are doing today, we will be able to provide a better and healthier future for our kids. The journey of exosomes has just begun with nano steps and giant leaps. Thank you. <laughs>